So I, I just share my story real quickly. But um, you know, when when uh, I, I was single when I went to Arizona, and that's what I went to visit Faithful Word Baptist Church. And it was funny because when when uh, when we went there, there were no girls in the church, right? It was just all young guys and married people. And, and I, I wasn't really concerned with finding a wife while I was there because I knew eventually I'd come back to Australia. But there were other guys that wanted to find wives. So we were thinking, oh, you know, how are we going to meet other girls? So some of the guys in the church that I used to hang out with who said, hey, you know, why don't we just go to the mall and just like chat up some girls? And to me, that, because, you know, maybe the culture that I come from, that was like, whoa, that was, <laughs> that was way like too, too daunting, like just chatting up like just a random stranger and then getting a number and talking. Because, you know, I guess from what my background is, you know, you always know them or you know somebody that knew them. So everybody I know that's married somebody has married somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody and was introduced to them or that you met them through a, through a circle, not just like picking up some random person. So we got together and we were like, okay, let's go to the mall. So we went to the mall that was nearby. It was Arizona Mills Mall. So it's kind of like going to Roselands, right? And they're like, hey, why don't we just, we'll go to the, we'll go to the food court. We'll get a drink so it doesn't just look like we're hanging out there doing nothing. <laughs> get a drink and we'll start like scoping out like, you know, which girls to approach. So I don't know how much to tell you about. I'll just tell you the funny details. But it's funny because it was there, one of the guys that were with there, um, he, he was really bold. Like, he, he would be like, hey, like, there's a girl that's pretty cute. And he's like, okay, I'm going for it. <laughs> so he'll, he'll go for it and he'll be talking to her. And we're like watching the conversation. And then halfway through the conversation, a gospel track comes out. And we're like, no, no, no. Like, don't, don't give her the gospel now. Like, just get to know her first. We're like, it's going downhill from there. So then he comes back and it's like, how did I guess I know I didn't go that well? He's like, but I gave her the gospel. <laughs> So we were doing that a couple of times and we were about to leave. And Elizabeth actually worked at, in, in the food court in the merry-go-round. So in the food court in Arizona Mills Mall, there was like a huge carousel, merry-go-round. And, and Elizabeth actually um, worked at that merry-go-round, just letting the kids in and letting them off. So we were about to leave and then, you know, she's, she's working there at the merry-go-round. And <clears throat> Matthew Stuckey, he's sort of like, you know, go over and talk to her. Because I was like, hey, that girl's kind of cute. He's like, go over and talk to her. I'm like, no. He's like, so he's sort of egging me on, right, and telling me to go talk to her. So I said, oh, okay. So I just forced myself, and then I went over. I was, I don't know if she remembers this, but going over with a huge grin on my face and just trying to think of what questions to ask her to get this conversation going. But thank God I was successful. I got, uh, I got a number, invite her along to bowling, because uh, we basically planned this bowling event to, in order to invite girls that we had met to <laughs> sort of take them bowling, right? So brought her along to bowling, and we had a, a couple of other dates. The second day we had is I took her out for ice cream, and then, and then at ice cream, because we were by ourselves, I gave her the gospel. That was the first time. And she didn't actually receive it that well. She was just like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. She doesn't know if she believes that. So it was kind of a bit awkward afterwards, and it was like, well, you know, even if we don't get together, you know, still, I still want you to be saved. So when I dropped her off at her home, I was just saying, hey, well, do, do you still want to meet up and get to know one another? And she was like, yeah. So I was like, oh, cool. So we made an, another appointment and, 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 and got together. And because she, I worked at an electronics store that was right next to that, um, that shopping center. So then I was picking her up after work and taking her own, home <coughs> after work. So from that day onwards, from that, after the, that day we had ice cream, we were seeing each other every day. So every day when we met up, we would go out, maybe get something to eat and, uh, in the car and at dinner and on the way home. What do you think we were talking about? The Bible. We're talking about the gospel. and Because she, she came from a Mormon family. So I was giving her the gospel, giving her the gospel week after week after, oh, sorry, day after day after day, not week after week, but day after day after day. And I just remember every time dropping her off at home before she got out of the car and went into the house, I'd always ask her, so is, is tonight, are you ready to ask Jesus to save you? So that went on for about two weeks where I was giving Elizabeth the gospel and eventually one night she said, yeah, because the night before she was saying, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him to save me like myself though. And then when I'd ask her the next night, she's like, no, she hasn't done it yet. So the night finally came about two weeks later um, <clears throat> where she said, yeah, you know, I'm ready to get saved. So then we prayed together in the car and that's when we started working towards marriage. So after that, after she got saved, right, I, I, she'd, never, she'd never come to church yet. So I wanted her to come to church and I wanted her to come soul winning because I wanted her to see what my life was like. So after she got saved, we, and all, throughout those, those two weeks, we'd been talking about all the things that we, I talked to you about today, talking about life, family, kids, all sorts of things. 
The only thing she hadn't experienced yet was church, the church that I went to. And I took her to Faithful Work. Well, actually, before she came to church, she came soul winning with me because on the Saturday, there was a soul, those small town soul winning marathons and I had to work in the morning and I wanted to go for the afternoon. So then we picked up Elizabeth and picked up a couple of other guys and then we went out to the small town and went soul winning for the rest of the afternoon from about one to about six o'clock. And Elizabeth came with me. So I took her soul winning and we went soul winning for a couple of hours and she really enjoyed it. And even, you remember Stephen Anderson asking you like, what did you think of soul winning? And she was like, she's like, yeah, I can see how it's hard work, but I can see how it's worth it. And I'm like, ding, ding, that's good. That's a good reaction to soul winning. So then after she came soul winning, then the Sunday was the first time she ever came to Faithful Word Baptist Church. And, and Stephen Anderson preached on adultery and fornication. And he was just like, ah! <laughs> So I was thinking like, so what did you think of that? What did you think of it? She was like, she, she, she loved it. She thought it was really interesting and engaging. And, you know, like she could see that his personality was like that, but it was expected because of the topic that he was preaching on. So it was actually that Sunday night that I took her home after the evening um, church meeting. And I took her home and I said, I, I, I don't know if these were the exact words that I said. But before, before I get to that, see, there was actually a time where it almost didn't work out. Because remember, I, I gave her the gospel at the beginning and it was kind of edgy there, but then we started to get to know one another. And about a week in, Elizabeth was having second thoughts. Like, I remember we were at a park once and we were talking and she basically said to me, you know what? No, I'm not willing to believe, you know, I'm not willing to change. This is not going to work out. So it was, that was kind of a bit heartbreaking on that night. But I don't know what I said or how I saved it. But for some reason, we kept still seeing each other. And, and um, you know, we eventually got married. So there was almost a fork in the road where it didn't work out. So after those two weeks, she came soul winning with me. She came to church. And then that night, I pretty much said something like this to her. I said, you know, well... You, you know what my life is like, you know, I, I work, I go to church, I go soul winning. This is what my life is like. And if you want to be a part of it, you know, I'll marry you. I'll take you back to Australia and, you know, and, and we'll get married. And that's pretty much how I proposed about two weeks or three weeks. I can't remember the exact date after we met. And she had to think about it for a bit. She went and spoke with her family and, and discussed and, you know, about a week later, she, she said, yeah, let's do it. So then we started to plan the wedding plan how we were going to get back to Australia and then we got married about two months, about a month and a half later after we met. Now I share you this story just, just to, to, to explain to you because when, when I did that, you know, I, I already knew going into that relationship what I believe today, what I'm teaching you today, what I was looking for. So I was looking for a girl that obviously was saved, that knew what I wanted to do in life because I had already had a goal to um, to, to, to serve the Lord Jesus and to start a church one day. So I already knew where I was heading and I knew what I was looking for. And I was looking for a girl, you know, I was attracted to and wanted to be a part of that. So when I found it, I could make that decision, right? So, you know, one of the things I, I said to Elizabeth, I remember, I don't know if Elizabeth remembers this. I said, you know, I don't know, I can't promise you what our life is going to be like, but I can promise you that if you marry me, you will serve God with your life. Because I knew that I would serve God with my life and I knew whichever girl I would marry, I would take along for the right. So um, the point I was trying to make is, you know, people often said to me, like, how did you make a decision so quickly? Because it boggles their mind saying, like, how did you decide to marry this girl in two weeks, in three weeks? Well, it's because of what I explained to you guys over the last couple of weeks. If you talk about these things, you know, it doesn't take long to get to know somebody. You know, especially if every time you meet, you're talking about things that matter. You know, oftentimes people date, they get together, they talk about things that don't matter. You know, talk about things that matter. Talk about your future together. You'll get to know somebody really quick because, you know, either it'll be a bit too much for them or, or they'll start to open up and you'll start to get to know them. And, and if you spend enough time with somebody, they can't hide who they really are, you know. So if you talk about these things, you get to know them, you know what the boundaries are that God has set for you. And if you want to marry that person, then you know that's God's will. And it doesn't take years and years to years to make that decision. So how, how did I choose so quickly? That, that's, that's how it worked out. And just using these principles that I'm teaching you today in the last couple of weeks. 